Okay, now we have one side completely pulled out. We can see the differential. And here it is the, uh, how can I say that? The drive shaft. And on the drive shaft, we have the brake discs and the steel plates between them. They're held by, they're held together by this sprocket and the circle clip at each end. So our problem is here. This is the this is the uh, this uh, the cylinder that pushes our that pushes our brakes together. And our main problem is two seals. One seals here, and the other seal is in the outer housing. And as you can see, when I press on them, they tend to crack. I'm not sure if you can see. See, you can see a small crack there, and when I press it anywhere, see, it's uh, rubbery, so hard and brittle, and you can just clearly see that's, that's no good. These are the disc brakes from the right axle. As you can see, they are not that much worn, but they are chipped away. Uh, I think that's because of the bad oil, because the hydraulic oil got into the got into the differential, and they didn't have proper lubrication, so they got they got chipped. Okay, we'll clean this up. We have to clean all this, put all the new parts, and put it back together, and do that the same thing on the other side. We got this cleaned off. And now we're gonna put some new seals. These are the genuine OM JCB. So they come in set of two. Part numbers are here. Cool. I got the new seals in. Put some grease on it. Now we have to put the cylinder back on. We have to be careful to line up the holes and I'll do that off the camera because it's way easier that way. Okay, I tap this thing inside with the hammer. Just don't use any force. Turn it around. Then we put springs inside and bolts that hold the cylinder in place. These springs actually uh, pull back the cylinder so you, your, brakes, your brakes don't stuck. Okay, I tighten these bolts. Next. We're gonna put some seal on to this side. Okay. Clean this surface off and put the brake brake cylinder assembly on there. So we need to have our uh, inlet port and bleed port up straight up, and they need to go on these two pins. And again, I'll have to do that without camera because it's quite heavy and quite difficult to do it one-handed. Yeah, be back soon. Yeah, I tap this thing inside. Just make sure when you're putting it back, uh, make sure that you lift this bearing because it needs to sit straight inside there. Now, put the bolts back in and tighten it. Okay, we got this thing tightened and sealed. Next, we're gonna install the uh, discs. So the customer wants the old metal plates installed back and the new brake discs. Okay, we did the same thing on the other side and the uh, seals, it's more or less the same shit. They're just, everywhere you touch it, it just cracks. So, 
after a while they tend to get hard and just brittle. Uh, on the left side of the machine, when you pull out the brake cylinder, you can clearly see the uh, differential and we'll just give it a quick wipe, clean it, put some sealant on and put it all back together. And it's on this on this machine we'll have to uh, replace the pinion seal there, the main seal, because uh, this whole differential was filled with oil and uh, that oil pressure when you apply the brake uh, is was, was pushing out the oil through the seal, so probably the seal is damaged, we'll replace that. And about the brake disc, on the left side, on the left side, the plates, metal plates were a bit more worn, so we'll replace them also. So full set on this side. I already installed the first one, and after that you just put the brake disc, and in between there is a metal plate. And we just push all that inside. Uh, it's kind of hard with one hand, but I'll do my best. There we go. Now we have to align everything back up. So that's it. To install the new seals in the brake caliper, you just align it and just take our plastic mallet and smack it all around until it's fully seated there. Uh, just give me a second. Just like that. And that's it. Then you turn it around, put some thread locker on the bolts, install the install the springs. Oh fuck it's on the floor. Install the springs, put some thread locker on the on the bolt. Doesn't wanna zoom in. And just tighten this because we don't want it to get loose and end up in the end up breaking some gears or something like that. Tighten it, of course, with a torque wrench, but I can't do that now while I'm filming. Okay, brake cylinder is back in. Brake uh, line connected, and new seals are on. So all we have to do now is just push the axle back in place so the uh, metal plates and the brake discs are all new everything is back in place you have like three pins here that you have to align everything on you have a snap ring that holds uh, on this sprocket from both sides there are snap rings that hold that in place and more or less that's it here, the, here are the old parts you have five brake discs these brake discs are not that worn but they're kind of damaged from the bad oil and these metal plates are which one is it? You can see wear marks and under fingernail you can see clearly they're a bit worn there so I decided just to put everything brand new oh this one is bad this, you can feel this one and okay let's push all that together okay now I'm more or less ready to put everything back I just wanted to show you this setup it's just a pallet uh, forklift and few pallets there, just a few wooden blocks that hold it kind of straight as I pull it out and you just just align everything back in place so we need to lift this a bit now uh, it's not really difficult thing to do it's not the most difficult thing so you just need some like basic tools for that it's nothing nothing too uh, I think we are close I think we are close we can go inside just push it in. Yeah, I forgot to tell you, I put the sealant on this side. You have to put sealant on everything there because it's filled with oil and you don't want to have any leaks there now. Okay. Okay, we got this pushed in and friend here is helping me put the bolts and we'll just go around and tighten them one by one. Uh, they need to be like really, really torqued because it's not a not a simple thing just when you drive and your axle falls off so you need to torque that like really really good okay uh, in a few minutes we'll be tightening just these two and putting back everything in place after that we'll be disconnecting the drive shaft and replacing the pinion seal there 
Okay, now I replaced the seal on the rail axle. It's just simple, just pull it out the screwdriver and put a new one in. Tap it in a few mils so it's level. After that, put in the uh, drive, shaft, drive shaft holder and just a nut and tighten it. There is a specific torque from JCB to tightening that shouldn't be over tightened. Okay, I'm back now. Uh, both of the axles are installed, so all the brakes are installed. I left the drain drain uh, bolt uh, removed because I wanted to see do we still have leak from the seals in the brake cylinders. So I already tested this, and do you remember that it was the alarm sound? every time you press the brakes so we still have the alarm sound going off uh, and it's because I believe it's because the brake accumulator uh, has lost his charge so the next thing we we'll have to do is replace the brake accumulator are you sure now okay now the brake pressure is okay and as soon as I touch the brake and it goes away straight away and Prior to replacement of the seals, the brake uh, warning light would stay on for a few seconds because the brake pressure was leaking inside the rear axle. Now, when I press both of them, it stays on for a second. But the next test that we can do, so by the manual of the JCB, you, when your engine dies, you're supposed to have like uh, 10 more pressures on the brake and the uh, machine should stop so you should still have some hydraulic pressure left in the system okay check this out so we kill the engine we leave the contact on so there is no warning light for the brake pressure and now I should be able to press it I don't know five six seven times and there should not be any warning lights and there it is